All right, guys, we're back, man. Another episode with Steve from McConaughey. Let's get this started. Guys, you want to stay with us, taxes, man? That's important, legally, of course. He knows how to do it. Let's go. Okay, and we are back, guys. Steve, we had a great show on Monday about taxes and how to save money. And you saved me quite a bit of money, uh, actually, last year and this year as well. Um, so without further ado, if you don't mind, Steve, tell me who you are again, just for a recap, and uh, let's go from there. Absolutely. So uh, I'm Steve Colon. They call me Steve from Accounting. And uh, basically, um, uh, Fresh here is my client and uh, has been more for what, three years now? Yeah, three years. Um, yeah, so basically I've been, uh, you know, I'm a CPA with um, three decades of experience. I uh, started in New York City, um, serial entrepreneur. I've owned several, several of my own businesses, and uh, I've got two practice locations here in Florida. And, uh, yeah, um, you know, I deal with high net worth individuals, business owners, and um, and uh, a lot of different industries. Um, you know, I've owned a medical uh, imaging practice um, in the state of Florida, and we sold that to a national company back in uh, 2013 and avid uh, real estate investor and i'm going to talk here with my, my man fresh here about cars and how to do it the right way you know there, there, there's a specific way to do it so and then just after this as well whenever i do a big purchase of cars or for example anything to do with like a big purchase i call steve for my you know to make sure i'm doing the right thing because steve was a numbers guy you know what to buy what not to buy so it's kind of like you're gonna call somebody you trust first before you make a big purchase, and you guys know love cars, so like that's my main thing. So if you guys don't know, um, I have a history of cars as well. If you don't know, and I have quite a few cars on my, you know, roster. We had the uh, Performante we just recently purchased. This one is amazing, uh, 2018, with all the bells and bells and whistles. We had as well the SVJ, as you guys know it, legendary. Um, we had as well, well, we still have the Rolls Royce um, truck. You know, um, we had the years as well as the uh, Hurricane Evo, as you guys know. And we had quite a few cars, guys, back and forth. But each car uh, played a role in me, you know, how about this? Played a role in me actually getting the benefits of, you know, not paying taxes on some level. So could you kind of break down how that, how that happens, uh, Steve? Yeah, say? so so um, not, not to get, not to mislead anybody here, yeah. you know, because... That, and, and we were talking about this just prior to getting on getting onto the stream here. Yeah. When you when it comes to luxury vehicles, there's certain things that you got to know and you got to do it right. And you have to do it. It's the your IRS is very specific on how you have to do this. So, mm -hmm. talking about your Lambo, you know the guy that you bought it from. I think you had you bought a couple of cars from the same guy, right? Yes. Same same dealer. So obviously him. this guy knows what he's doing. He structures these leases property, uh, properly. And there's a way that we're going to talk about that to simplify that for you guys, so you have an understanding mm -hmm. when you go into this. But I would just say, you know, for the general mindset, um, you know, because um, uh, Myron is a completely different mindset than you are, right? Full real estate, right? no cars, okay. only has a Honda. Let's say someone still don't forget uh, Myron's Honda. Yeah, correct, correct. So he's more interested in investing in real estate and putting his money there. And obviously, yeah. you know, Fresh, Fresh has, the, has the luxury cars here. So um, to speak to that, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a mindset that these vehicles, you know, you have every right to purchase them. It's, it's, you know, I've arrived, I've made it. And, and we, we, we want to do it in the right way. We want to do it in the way right it makes way. sense. Right. So if you're going to do that, make sure that, you know, first off, he has a business that can fund this stuff. He can afford it. Yeah. He's not doing this outside of, you know, outside of the means of how he lives. Yeah. That's number one. Um, so that's very important to know. So that's how the rich do these things. They, these are, these are, you know, luxury purchases for them. Yeah. And they have businesses set up where they can afford this stuff. And then being that you can afford it, you still want to take the maximum advantage of writing it off. So, yes, because you guys, you can get whatever you want, but I would seek out someone that's an expert in that, you know, area, just to make sure you do everything correctly. So when you do get it, it makes sense that you're not doing it the wrong way. Because what happens with people that have a lot of money, especially people that win, win the lotto, they get the money, they don't know how to like, kind of like use the money and then lose right. everything, you know? Right. So. 
So now just to talk about what, what is a luxury vehicle, according to the IRS, it's anything that you, any vehicle that you purchase that's over $61,000. Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously the cars that you have are over $61,000. How did you do that? You did it through a capital lease. Yes. And can we just add as well, our first purchase that was a car, it was luxury, was a Range Rover. It was okay. over 61 that, that was the good one. And, and the reason why that was a good one, because that was section 179. It was over 6,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. So that one, we were able to write off significant portion of that the first year yeah um, and it was a range, range over sport yeah it was around 71k we got it um pretty much uh pre-owned it was really dope that was a great buy yeah we yeah got a good deal i still have it i still have it today um let me see pull up for you guys real quick is that, this, a, is that a diesel that was a diesel, diesel too as well diesel, right? okay. this was the first purchase we, we we bought guys for um purposes uh here's an example here as you guys can see Matte black Range Rover. Yeah, it was nice. it's pretty yeah. identical. This one here, um, pretty dope, and it's diesel as well. So the money coming through. Yeah, so this vehicle, mm -hmm. great one. Um, I think the um, the Lambo Urus too is over six thousand pounds. Yes, right? that qualified. Well, seven. does it? I don't. I, I was in right. Some of them are. I thought, I thought. I thought it was. You see, let me double check. The weight. Here's the weight. weight on it. Yeah. Let's make sure. So I hear myself. Um. No, nah, see, so yeah, yeah, it's not just under because okay. I wanted it to be what it wasn't. Yeah. So okay. Okay. darn it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go back to the capital lease. So now what they do is the, so the way that works, capital lease, is you have to have a bargain purchase price. So at the end of the lease term, you, you know, I think you put it, I think I saw it in there for a dollar, dollar purchase. So typically they they have a bargain purchase, you know, because there's certain things that have to be put in that lease to, for it to qualify as a capital lease. And what the hell is a capital lease? So basically he's making lease payments on this car, but we're treating it as though he owns it. We list it as an asset. Yeah. Okay. And we depreciate it as, as though he purchased it and we'll, and we depreciate it. And then you can apply section 179 to that capital lease. So let's say I'm a first time person. I want, I want to get into this with my CPA. How should I approach them to say, you know what? Hey, Mr. Uh, Calderwood, I want to go ahead and set up myself to have this benefit with buying cars. What, what, how should you approach them in the first place? I mean, the only thing I would bring in the CPA in on is the, you know, to make them aware that it is mm -hmm. and that you can afford it. If he's that intimate with you as far as how, you know, managing your money and knowing where you stand financially. Yeah. Um, but most guys that are going to be dealing in these types of cars mm -hmm. are going to know this. This okay. is a very good selling point for, you know, so for instance, the guy that you, you were dealing with, you know, he, he was very well versed in this stuff. And he was like, you know, if, if he was basically telling you, they make sure you tell your accountant, you know, X, Y, Z. So, so Steve is saying, in a nutshell, the person you buy the car from the dealership or the car seller should have an idea of how to structure the deal so you can win and I'm saving us taxes because they know for a first hand yeah. from business owner how to buy a car to actually like help you with, this, with taxes. So they know what to do. Yeah, and it's a selling point for them. So they're going to take advantage of that and they're going to be well versed in this, how to, how to pitch this to you and to your CPA. Or they should be at least uh, hoping that they are. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's, this is the strategy really, you know, that the, that the wealthy use to you know, maximize this purchase and make, make sure they're getting the ultimate tax benefit from it. So uh, you mentioned earlier real estate as well, and I have some as well. Could you break down having, what's the benefit of having both the car and the real estate? Cause I, I think if you just use one, it's cool, but you can use both of them kind of like maximize your, um, I want to say. They're, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're Two different things, you know what I mean? So, I mean, I look at your business, you guys do two businesses that you have. So the rental being one type yeah. of business for passive income and then the other business that you're doing, you know, operating with the social media and everything online presence as another operating business. Those businesses are producing money to fund the luxury car purchases. Right. And then there's things that you could do to maximize what we're doing, taking a depreciation, capital lease, section 179. Um, also, the other thing you got to you got to be aware of is each vehicle that you purchase for your business, you have to demonstrate that using it for legitimate business purposes, and you have to track that. So you have to say, okay, what's the percentage that I'm using it? So typically, whatever miles that you put on that car per year, mm -hmm. how much of it was business use of it, you know, you're gonna get the mileage of it. But then that kind of ultimately, you know, when a client comes to me and says, hey, I bought this hundred thousand dollar car. Um, and I asked them, okay, you know, are you tracking your miles? And they have, you know, download your, you know, your, your mileage app. Yeah. It's, you know, free and it's easy to do. And then they'll, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll demonstrate to me how much they're using it for um, business. That's why the IRS 
when it comes to luxury vehicles, mm -hmm. they're more restrictive on it and there's luxury limits. Okay. Because if you're just going to buy a car for over $61,000, they're, they're going to be tight on how much you can take in maximum depreciation per year. And you're going to limit that. You mentioned yesterday as well. Um, at some point, it was 100% of the car's purchase price. Now it's 80%, and it's going yeah. down. That's for bonus the depreciation. Weight. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there is, you know, if you have a five, um, seven, and 15 year asset, well, the car is going to be a five year asset mm -hmm. and equipment and stuff like that, you get a bonus depreciation <laughs> um, allowance on it. And then now there's sunset. It's called sunsetting. So now it's, now in this year, it's 80%. Next year, it'd be 60, 40, 20, and then it'll be zero. Um, because I used to wonder why would somebody like Grant Cardone buy another G wagon, another Rolls Royce, Cullen, but it's because of the weight. Easier to buy the a new weight because it's a six thousand um, dollar vehicle. Yeah, he's demonstrating that he's using it for business purposes, and you know he's got he's got you know top notch CPAs that are handling this stuff. So he's doing it the right way, documenting everything. Um, hmm. But again, you know, so you have to demonstrate what the percentage is, and <laughs> most companies that I have that are using luxury vehicles. You're gonna there's gonna be some personal use to it. Yeah. You know? And then if you you were putting a car on there for hundred percent, you know, business use, the IRS is probably gonna kind of you know um, look at that and say, okay, really? And then, so that that's kind of like setting yourself up to you know have a, a red flag going in the future. And let's say I'm hearing this information right now and it's great. When should I seek to get a, a CPA that like yourself? Like let's say I start a business or I'm I'm working a job. When should I seek to get a CPA, in your opinion? When should I start? As <clears throat> as early as possible. Um, I mean, it's going to basically make sure that you get somebody that you can trust, that you know, that whatever industry business, whatever business that you're you're, you're setting up to do, like, you know, if it's, you know I'm going to put up my own uh, air conditioned HVAC business. Talk to the other guys in you, you know, maybe the vendors or somebody, and find out who they're using, other other people, like, maybe in, in the same area. Yeah. And... And find out if they're happy with that guy. If that guy's accessible, if he's taking on new clients, is he does he price his product, you know, his service um, reasonably? Um, and make sure that you get a, you know, the earlier you bring somebody in, um, the better off you're going to be. Because if you do it in the beginning, you're going to wind up setting yourself up properly, making better decisions, getting a bookkeeper like we talked yesterday on yeah. the show, and you're going to have information where. You're, you're, you're going to be able to plan ahead of time before you get to the year end. Because a lot of times clients come to me and they don't do any of that. And all of a sudden they have a business, they make they make a couple hundred thousand dollars. And then after, you know, come February, they come and sit down and they, you know, they say, hey, you know, um, can you do my taxes? Their books are not done. No, <laughs> you know, their, their bank accounts. Not ready at all. Um, haven't been reconciled. So now we got to do all of that stuff. And then now they figure out, okay, how much do I owe? Because they didn't make any estimates. They don't know how much they made profit-wise. They have kind of maybe a general idea, but they don't really know. So now it's too late to do anything for them at that point. Had they come to me early on when they started, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll charge them a consult fee, but it's not a lot of money to sit and, you know, they're going to sit and with me, you know, and let's say I charge them, you know, $300, $400. Yeah. And they spend an hour. You know, with me. And that hour's time, I can basically get them set up with their, with their online um, bank stuff. Hook them in, dial them into a uh, bookkeeper that's gonna be you know, pretty cheap. You could probably get something from 50, 60, $100, $150 a month, depending on how many transactions they have. And then they'll have that information readily available throughout the year. So come this, this time of year right now, like September, third quarter, mm -hmm. I can have access to their books online and look at, you know, like I get that's their bookkeeper semi, you know, a, a snapshot of their profit and loss, see where they're at. And then maybe they can make some purchases. You know, a lot of these guys, like let's say it's an HVAC company, you know, they got to always update their equipment and they got a lot of times they're buying new vans and stuff because they got you know, technicians going out driving and stuff like that. So as early as possible, spend, you know, spend a couple hundred dollars doing that because on the back end, more than likely it's going to save you, you know, a couple you know, thousands of dollars in the back end. Okay. Um, so real quick, uh, super Javier's question and guys ask questions in the chat. If you want to, no problem. Um, and if you want to donate, you can, it's fnsuperchat.com. We, we appreciate it. Me and Myron, uh, he says, Hey Steve, if I work a 1099 job and open the LLC, can I write off the Jeep? So if you're using that Jeep for your business, I don't know what type of business it is. So if you're using it to, you know, go and pick up supplies, go to the store, um, or go see clients and stuff like that. So you could probably justify that you have business business use for that vehicle. Yeah, probably you can. You know, just just basically you have to 
measure and track your mileage and figure out what the percentage is. So based on, you know, if you have 15,000 miles for the whole year mm -hmm. and you have 10, you know, let's say 7,500 of that was business, then that's a 50% um, use, business use, and you can list it. So if you bought that car for 50 grand and you can you know, take 50% of that, it's gonna be $25,000 because you're using it for 50% use and you're gonna use that to, to uh, appreciate. And I can see here the weights of these uh, Jeep models. Uh, so these are some good ones that are over 6,000 pounds. So, uh, I would say pretty good for these 179. Yeah. Right? Yeah. These right here. So, so yeah, Jeep's definitely a bit on the heavier side. So that's good. That's good. All right. Um, what else we got here? Uh, let's see. Fresh, you need to do a video on the main channel, how to properly obtain luxury cars, how you do it. We had uh, some guests on, um, like Lucky Lopez. He's pretty good at that as well. Um, but yeah, we, we could do another one. Um, Stoic Matt says, have you invested in real estate? I don't want to see you go broke because YouTube demonetizing you. No, nah, that's fine, bro. Um, we have real estate as well. That's fine. Um, he says, uh, there's a tax write-off for cars that weigh over 6K pounds. Yes. We yeah, got it's this. called Section 179. <clears throat> okay. Um, hey, guys. Ask away. Uh, we're going to do a call as well. We might see you on network after this just for more in-depth um, you know, explanation with the members. And uh, let's see what we got here. We got... Blue Orion says, I have to buy a pickup for my business to haul my food trailer. Does it have to be over 6,000 pounds to write it off? Or it can be any pickup anyway? No, it doesn't have to be over 6,000 pounds. That's just to, to qualify for the Section 179, which gives you an immediate deduction. Mm -hmm. So if you don't, then you're just going to list it as a regular vehicle and then write it off. But you can, there's bonus depreciation, which you can take extra depreciation um, the first year. So you can take up to 80%. Okay. There you go. And uh let's see who else we got here. Let's see. Actually, I had a question as well. So let's say I am seeing the news. I'm seeing people like tar like on, uh, for example, Amazon, you know, Trump, and let's say Jeff Bezos, they don't pay any money in taxes. Like, what does that mean for the average person? Can they even do that as well? Is that even an option? Like, how would they go about not paying taxes? Are are as little as possible uh, for taxes? Yeah, so, because these legally. Yeah, I mean, they, these guys have very complicated tax structures. They have multiple entities that they're wrapping up into each other. A lot of times, you know, they're they're borrowing money off of their businesses, kind of like what uh, was it? Robert Kawasaki talks about that a lot. He's like, yeah. you know, I don't Robert. I don't pull money, um, you know, spend cash on deals. Like he borrows a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that's they finance things, you know. So your business, like my my, my practices are worth something, right? I have, the, there's, there's a value to that. So if I go to a bank and say, hey, I want to borrow, you know, I could borrow five hundred thousand dollars, and I don't pay month, I don't pay taxes on that money, and I take that money and I reinvest it. So these guys are taking small amounts of salary. They're paying, you know, they're they're paying themselves, um, you know, the payroll taxes on that. And then the way they're structured is, um, it's very complex. So they're able to, to um, purchase things using borrowed funds and then create more deductions through Section one seventy nine. You know, um, so yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I don't look at these guys' tax returns. So if they tell me they're not paying taxes, I have to believe them. I don't know. You know, I mean, it, it, I'm sure that they're paying taxes because they're employing people. Mm -hmm. um, they're probably getting a lot of tax credits too, as well. You know, going into these certain like economic zones and stuff like that. So they 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 know how to get tax credits. So these are very complicated structures and multiple entities going on. So you know, it's hard to say for sure exactly what what it, what businesses they're in yeah what, what strategies they're utilizing without knowing details everything this stuff yeah okay and uh alien says hey steve i'm going to start a home service business soon any advice on just laying out the foundation before launch like insurance llc etc starting a home service business soon he wants advice for the laying out i guess the foundation for launch yeah uh, so i mean um it sounds to me like it's kind of like a handyman type of service um you know, so definitely you're going to have a vehicle. You're going to be driving a lot. Mm -hmm. You're going to be going to Home Depot, Lowe's, and clients. You know, tra tra um, a lot of miles. Yeah, you know, transporting your tools and materials. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of trips to Home Depot. So you're going to be putting a lot of. Um, so you're going to definitely want to list that vehicle. It's probably going to be very Queen. high use. Use like you know, 80, 90, maybe even 100 percent. Because maybe you'll keep all your tools in there. Um, yeah, definitely. If you're going to do the LLC, do the, um, and I, and I talked about this yesterday. I had the book. I don't know if that's, is that on the screen? Yes, too? guys, real What's quick. The one in the middle. We had the book. 
to cover basically W2, um, you know, uh, people as well as business owners. And Steve has it here for you pretty much for free um, on his page. So if you go well, that it, one, yeah, that one it used to be free because I was, I was doing that for you. I did that for yeah, you guys. Yeah, but for that us. A to Z guide, it's $26. Um, there's a couple ways you guys can go that, you know, that actually this is all your idea. So this is all, yeah. all fresh is credit. Okay. So I started a Patreon and I'm offering only the fresh and fit guys, the first hundred guys. And I'm keeping it small too. Like it's kind of exclusive. And here it is guys. Patreon.com slash seeing beyond the numbers. Yeah. So you can get that book. There's, there's three books. I got, I got the W2 wage earners stuff. I've got the real estate one, the eight strategies for real estate. And I have the A to Z. So for the handyman guy, you're, you're going to be doing, um, you got an LLC. You're going to want to make that an S corp. You're going to want to know how to do that. If somebody came to me, this is this book. I wrote myself step-by-step step, exactly the steps I take. When a client comes to see me and I'll charge them three or $400 to do this, to convert them to an S corp, set them up properly. Okay. And um, yeah, it's on the SAM card. But you, you know, the other thing too, is I'm having these small business owners like yourself for 26 bucks, you get the middle tier. I'll, I'll I'm just click on the $26 one, the base one. And then I'm going to, for only the, the first hundred guys that come in, I think I got about 80 spots left or something like that. Nice. Um, I'm going to give you the $44 at the $26 price. Okay? Oh, wow. That's dope. Yeah. And you get those books with it. I'm going to do a weekly call. I've got already a couple of guests coming in, like they're high net, like high net worth of guys. I got like, um, he's got, it got his own like liquor brand. He might even sell it to Bacardi actually. He's like in wild, uh, Buffalo wild wings. Um, he's got his own like distillery in Durango, Mexico. Okay. So he's going to be one of my first guests, but um, very amazing guy. Very amazing story. How he's, he was in the construction. I mean, this guy was in, in a lot of, a lot of stuff. So he's got a lot of stuff to give and it's all free. So you're getting every week there's calls and then you're getting the QA with me. So if you've got specific questions about your tax situation um, and, the, and then I can line you up not only with bookkeeping services, not from me personally, but people that I know mm -hmm. that I can farm the workout to if, if um, you know, it calls for it. Yeah. And then, I mean, we could take on certain clients too and do the tax return stuff too as well. Uh, but I can set you up with people and you'll be in a situation where you could take everything right to your tax preparer. And I love having clients like that. That's huge, by the way. Yeah. All organized with everything done. Um, and your fees are going to be very low. So, and you're going to, it's almost like you're getting, because, you know, I'm very busy throughout the year. So, I mean, I know I, you know, I have, I have a list of very high exclusive clients that I allow them to call me on my, you know, my phone. And, um, you know, like when you have a purchase on a Saturday or whatever like that, I allow a certain amount of clients that, but not every CPA is going to be able to do that for you guys. Yeah. So that's why I'm creating this for you guys to come in and have that level of service. So it's, it's I'm kind of like redefining the way that I think the industry is kind of changing and with, with all this online stuff, there's kind of, you make it more personal. You make it more personal. personal and you're getting more benefit from it. And I'm, I'm going to have lawyers in there. I'm going to have health professionals there. I have doctors, they have their own practices. Good. Um, you know, these are the quiet money guys. You know what I mean? That's what I call them, the quiet money guys, like uh, the, the silent millionaires. And they love to come in and just talk about their story and give you guys a ton of advice. So, you know, I, I love it too. So, all right. Uh, sounds good. And we have here uh, Marco A says, What's the sweet spot for CPA costs per year? He wants to know how much, I guess, for a CPA sh should cost. Um, I mean, it depends. So, if you're going to get, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, 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 if you, so, if you're going to get your 1040 done, like for me, I'll be pretty, you know, I've been doing it for a, for a while. So we're a little bit more expensive because we can shoo away, you know, more clients. You, there's only so much you can do, right? So it's not, it's not that scalable. So we, you know, I'd say for an average, you know, I don't know, maybe around four or five hundred dollars for like for like a 1040, you know, in that range. I'm a little bit higher priced than some of the other guys. You know, it depends on where you live. For good right? reason, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but um, like if it's gonna be a corporate return, I mean, you know. And we're doing something, you know, I've got like six, seven, eight thousand dollar know, corporate returns, but they have a lot of transactions, there's a lot of stuff involved with them. Um, but on average, I'd say like anywhere from 750 to maybe 1500 for like an S Corp return. Okay. Um, but um, W2? How much is W2? For W2 guys, you know, they're anywhere from 350 to 550, depending on how, how complicated they are. That's fair. Okay, Nico G. Open an LLC in Wyoming, but I live in New York for a website that deals with OnlyFans types of content called or, or Kinks. Do I pay taxes for state of New York or Wyoming? It's all virtual servers running. Mm, so he opened LLC in Wyoming, but he lives in New York and it's a website. Okay, so you live in New York. Um, 
You open it in Wyoming. You're creating the content in New York. Think- so what you have to do is you have to go in and you have to look up and you can Google it. Google uh, called Nexus, N-E-X-U-S, Nexus, right? Nexus means like each state has jurisdiction over the uh, money that you're making. Mm-hmm. So that means like if products are sold, you know, I'm in Florida, we're in Florida here, right? Yeah. And if I buy, let's say light bulbs for my, you know, showroom, my, my furniture showroom, and I buy those in Georgia, um, I have to make sure that Georgia charges the appropriate sales tax before I bring that product here. And then you know, there's people that come go around in the state of Florida and they, they'll go to showrooms and look at lights and find out, you know, where they're buying those, that product from, they're buying it online. So you got to find out exactly for what what is the nexus for the state of New York to find out if New York has jurisdiction of your income. I would think so if you're residing there and you're making income within the state from out of state, um, that you're going to have some type of filing requirement from the state of New York. Hmm. All right. Um, J-Dub Solomon says, Steve, I'm 16. I have some college offers. What should I major in accounting? Or should I major so, in, in accounting? It's a great... I mean, if you're going to do a business um, track, accounting is the best one to take, especially if you're going to be a business owner. You can, it's so versatile. That's why I took it because you can, you can, there's so many different ways you can go with it versus like economics. It's very limited or banking, big, you know, it's traditional, tri- traditional finance is kind of probably going to be a thing of the future because we have, you know, the digital world with um, crypto and a lot of the digital financial products are, you know, being created down in the future. Um, marketing is, you know, sales, you just go get a sales job. That's marketing is, is, is a waste of my opinion. Um, but yeah, accounting is one of the best because you, you can take so many different tracks. So if you're going to major in the business track, take accounting, if you can stomach it, you know, not everybody can, it's not for everybody. All right. Uh, Built to last says, I owned a rental, a rental property for a year. I have not used depreciation on taxes. How do I add it to my taxes moving forward? So get the closing statement, give it to your CPA on there, on that closing statement. It's going to show the purchase price and all the closing costs that you're going to put in there. And, um, and then he'll know what to do. Okay. And then make sure, ask him if you could do just like a rudimentary cost segregation. Ask him about that. I don't know what the purchase price of this is, but that's going to benefit you from the depreciation standpoint. But you could still depreciate it. All right. Uh, chill man says, hey, Steve, big fan of yours. Shout out to you. Uh, B says, being single... And no, no, no dependents seem to get you taxed the hardest. Are there any ways to keep more money throughout the year? He's in California. Oof, that's well, tough. Yeah, they got the highest tax for the states out there. That's so he's being tough. single dependent. I mean, it's tough. I have that book right there. It's a dollar. So if you want to go to my, my, my the link in my um, Instagram there, I had to put it on Sam Card, and they made me put it for something. So I only have it for a dollar. Just go get that book. It's got ten strategies for W two wage earners. It's right. Yeah, it's the top one. The death. It's called death and taxes. It's, it's for the W two wage earners. It's kind of. It's, yeah, I had to put it on there for something. So just go grab that one, and it's got some ideas in there for you. Right. Liable death and taxes. <laughs> that is very true. Um. Okay. And then we have as well. Run it back says Steve slash Fresh. What are your thoughts about high yield savings accounts? Yeah, you were talking about that yesterday. With, with Myron, yeah. Yeah, it was like five to six percent. Yeah, with um Fidelity? No, it wasn't. No, it was um Merrill Lynch. Yeah, Merrill Lynch. Merrill Lynch. Merrill Lynch, yeah, Merrill Lynch. Yeah, just do it. I mean, if you don't know where to put your money right now, I mean um you but you, park you, it somewhere. You do need hundred K minimum to start. So that's oh that was the one that's the barrier yeah. entry. You need hundred K to get this account. Shop so, it out, yeah. Yeah, Shop it out. Get in mind. Other banks. Yeah. Okay, uh let's see. Uh, Malkova asks, hey, Fresh, can you bring Steve on for Fresh Fit for Money Monday and do an episode on how to become an accountant and get your CPA? I mean, we got that'd be, I'd love to do that, yeah. We didn't do that specifically, yeah. so that's a that's an option. Yeah, we could. That's a great track. You know what? There's, there's not a lot of people getting into it anymore. It's a, it's a dying, it's a dying uh, track right now. And it's very needed. It's trouble. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, so he has a question. Giovanni says, are you familiar with working with someone that receives stocks as compensation in their yearly wage? Yeah, stock options. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's a lot of different ways to treat that. So you have to, you know, it depends on you know what what the strike price is and how much it's what's the value of it when you when you exercise it. And, uh, yeah. So each stock option 
contract is very unique and different. So yeah, definitely you want to get somebody that knows what they're doing. And typically they'll do a 1099 on that and yeah. report it on your um, on your um, wages, your W-2s. Okay. Um, we have here as well, Marco A says, do you have to pay state taxes in each individual state you have income in? I've worked in five states this year in the Midwest. Um, here's the states right here. So the way it works is it's going to go based on the dates that you, so when you work and you're getting your W-2 wages, depending on how they're taxing your W-2 wages, they're going to automatically take taxes out of those states. So if you want to like say, okay, I wasn't living in those states. I wasn't a resident. I was only like a, like a part time resident mm -hmm. and my main state is let's say New York or whatever. So you file your New York state taxes and then you'll file your taxes in those other states because you have the W-2, um, you know, showing that you worked in those five different states, and then you can get a refund typically in those jurisdictions based on the amount of time that you, you, uh, you know, typically you're going to be a primary resident of one state or the other, you know, more than six months. So, yeah, just give your W 2s to the guy that's doing your taxes, and then, you know, we put in all the states and all the taxes that you pay for those, yeah. and then you could probably get a refund if, if they were taking money out of those. Okay. Uh, we have here. Golden Standard says, please tell me, should I bring a W-2 to the casino for taxes my, for, my, or for my own records? I normally win 100K or 30K jackpot. Yeah, right, bro. Anyhow, and anyway, to save, that's 24% that they take out. So he wants to know, I guess you should bring W-2 to the casino for his wins. So um, no, because the casino is going to give you a 1099 gambling winnings for that. So the W-2 doesn't even come in there. It's not earned wages. Mm. So it has nothing to do with W-2 wages. The casino will issue you... 1099 at the end of the year if you have gambling winnings. And then you can take gambling losses. Oh, wow. So track your gambling losses. Now the casino always wins. <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're a pro. I don't know. That's how they are set up. Uh, JG says, great stream, guys. 27 years old, blue-collar business owner in the state of Massachusetts. I run an interior design firm. I work as a GC for the renovations I do. Last year, I paid for everything in my personal life, as well as business, with the company card. I wrote it off my taxes as a loss. I was curious of the legality of this strategy. So that's a good one. On my Instagram, I, ha I have a reel on there because there's a there's tax people out there that are peddling certain strategies. Like, okay, you know, you can you can create this business and and um, write off everything, create a loss, and then offset it against your W two wages. That is a no no, right? And so here's here's why: if you create a business, you definitely want to make it. A to Z guide, LLC to S Corp. Why? Because you're filing a separate return and you're separating your business from your personal. The IRS has two departments of the of, of that do audits and examinations. So they do personals. The personal people don't audit the businesses. They don't audit the S Corps. They'll just get a K-1 as long as it matches your K-1. That's it. So you have to get selected for an audit separately on your business. So that's a strategy that I like. The other one is you report all that stuff on your 1040 mm -hmm. and offset it, I'll take a loss and offset it against your W-2 wages. That's a huge red flag because the IRS already knows that a lot of people try to use that strategy to um, get their W-2 wages down and pay less taxes and get a refund to produce a refund. So that's a huge major red flag. Okay. All right. Uh, one second here, guys. And cool. Another one says, um, Philly, damn, Masters, please tell me if I can put my, don't call it Masters, bro. We're just guys with some information, man. Steve's an expert here for accounting and for, you know, being a CPA. I'm good at a bunch of stuff. Um, of course, you know, networking, but we're not going to be like Masters, bro. We're just like people that have done certain things in life that are maybe a bit further ahead, but yeah. not Masters, bro. We're just sharing our life experience yeah. with you guys. Hopefully you benefit from it. If yeah. you like this content, keep watching, you know, and you can learn more from it. That's we're just here to, to help you guys out. Yes, it calls men if anything, calls mentors, if anything. Uh so please tell me if I can put my money at your stocks and the re reworn, funky and sweaty, most powerful smelling sheer silk dress socks that you wore all year round. And now show me. <laughs> she get into comedy. Yeah, it's just <laughs> I should have known when he said masters. Uh, okay, uh, JT says, if self-employed, can you write off your health insurance? Ooh, great question. Yes, yes. And then, uh, so working what on you have now. to do what you have to do if you're self-employed and you have a business, make sure you have an S corp. 
that S Corp has to pay the premiums. It has come out of the premium. I mean, that has to be paid by the S Corp. Don't pay it personally because then you're going to screw that up. But yeah, and then what, what's nice about that is that deduction is a complete off is a complete deduction off your page one of the 1040. I know this is kind of jargon stuff, but if you ever look at a 1040, you have your income an adjustment. We take it right off. Otherwise, you have to go what's called itemized deductions and then 90% of the time or not, you're going to get the deduction for the health insurance. Plan. So make sure you do it that way. Just make sure your S Corp pays the premium out of, out of the business account. Okay. And we have here, okay, Golden Standard. Thank you, bro. I like the video, guys. I mean, it's free, you know, if you don't mind. J Dub says, does Steve double in the dark? <laughs> you know what that means, bro? Yeah. So do you? I, oh, I don't man. Discriminate. Okay, okay. Don't discriminate he's a man whatsoever. of he's a man of means by any means possible. Okay, I like it. <laughs> okay. Uh Tito says food truck LLC formed on the 20 on June 2019. Is it too late to elect as S Corp? Ooh. No. Oh, 2019. That's oh, like shit, 2019. Yeah, it is. So yeah, you, you gotta do it like within the first 24 months of the time you created the so you might have to go back to the drawing board, start a new one. It might be a pain in the ass to get all the licenses for the food truck and stuff like that, depending on where you're at. But just do it because it's going to save you a shit ton of, of excuse me. No, it's, it's fine, bro. It's, it's going to save you um, a lot, a lot of taxes in the future. So you, you're going to have to go and reincorporate and do the do the uh, escort. Alex Jones, first has been on the up and up lately. Your energy has been awesome lately. Thanks, bro. I just been it's focusing on out. yeah, working out, man. Just been focusing on myself. You know, I focus so much on the podcast. Give a lot of my life for the podcast. You guys don't even know. And uh, now it's kind of like established in a certain way. I kind of put it towards myself, the energy I'm using, and it feels good because now I focus on bettering myself as an individual. So it's pretty good. Thanks, man. Um, hey, fresh. How do I plan moving to Miami from San Diego? I plan on moving to Miami next year. I'm tired of my hometown. It needs to be somewhere to grow. Yeah, I think guys, if you want to grow, understand that your environment may not be uh, the place to be because obviously you're comfortable there. Everyone knows you, and they, they don't they don't want to see you win for the most part. So moving to a new location where no one knows you gives you a variety of options and opportunities. So I think for most people, if you want to be successful, leave a comfort zone, go somewhere new, like a major city, like I would say, like uh, maybe Miami, uh, New York, Texas, and then from there. Try to network, meet people that help you, for example, mentor in, in a space you want to learn or maybe groups of people, communities. And I would say your current environment may be the, what's holding you back. So just think about moving or consider it as an option. You know, I mean, Miami is great because the cost of living is very, and I mean, and if you look out the window right here, I mean, I beautiful. There's, there's so many cranes. Like, look right here, you got one, two, three, four, a lot of development costs. You save money growth. in taxes too. You save money in taxes. I mean, it's pretty good too. Um, what's the what's the amount of people moving to? I mean, I know this Florida. Florida like it was last time I checked. It was, was eight thousand monthly. Monthly eight thousand. Okay. That's so crazy. You, and a lot of them are coming here. Obviously, eight thousand yeah. people, guys. That's a lot of people every month. Um, or is that, is that I daily? Think California is losing. Is that is, is that daily? Hold on, let me check real it quick. It could be daily because I, I think that's be seventeen thousand. Yeah, that's like, that's like uh, years ago for a month. It sounds like, like a lot, but I think it's it daily. It so daily. how many people move to Florida a day? So look, 1, guys, so, yeah. twelve hundred. So that's so if you do the math, guys, like, this is this like is like crazy. Grand, so 35, 000 12, 000 18 here. people, roughly, I mean, could be well, more, could be illegal people too. Who knows? Uh, twelve eighteen by thirty. That's thirty six k a month. Went to Florida. Sheesh. Or do twelve eighteen. Ooh, twelve eighteen. Three sixty five per year. Four hundred and forty four thousand people. So almost half a million. A year. A year. Yeah. So well, there, just just to Florida up. alone. And wow. I put in there how many people left Cal the state of California Ooh. last year? Okay. Let's see. Any people left? Call me for you. Maybe it's twenty twenty. Okay, let's see. The state is currently home to about 38.9 million people, down more than 130k year over year. Okay, so yearly, um, the last one was 150,000. Has shrunk by 500k people. Wow. Oh, 500,000. Yeah, 500, yeah. So they're they're all ending up here. They're 500,000 people left. They're all coming here. So yeah, Man. Florida's going up about a half a million, and California's going down 
That's crazy, bro. Um, okay, guys, we're gonna end it here. Not because I don't love you, but because my members need this information as well. And if you guys don't don't know Cecilia Network, it's my group of people that I trust and believe in, and we're family. Uh, so we're gonna go over there and do a Zoom call with them. Um, but this is a good, a good uh, perfect, yeah, good stream, Excellent. man. Yeah. So guys, if you want, like I said, uh, if you're starting a new business, you want to get the books on there you know i've got them in there i got i got one and i tried to give it for free but it's a dollar so you could get that one at least if you're a w2 wage earner but here get, it is um get on my get on my uh instagram because i'm gonna you got you got to tell me because what i don't want to compete with your day on tuesday so i gotta do no dude dude dude, dude, dude. Day. there's enough um people that need the information to go around so i have no problem at all bro because i thought about doing it i'm gonna do lives on instagram yeah every tuesday 8 p.m eastern standard time Okay. So if you follow me on there, you'll get the message. And then you can ask me all the questions you want about small business, startup, um, taxes, you know, vehicles, depreciation, structure, anything, any, any, any question you want, entrepreneurship. Yep. Um, anything. And guys, type with, with me as well, man. Uh, we're actually going to go after this um, call from the SEAL network into the uh, new whip, STO, man. Uh, got it for for today. Oh, nice. um, possibly gonna gonna buy it soon. And I, I like the look of it. It's sleek. Oh, wow. It has so many lines and so many curves, man. I like it a lot. But guys, tap into the CEO network, man. I'll see you guys in there. And if you're not sure how to get there, um, just type in, you know, patreoncom slash, slash CEO network. And then uh, as you can see here, man, a lot of new members join every single day. We have calls. Cool. Um, I brought in my speech coach uh, to talk to you guys as well. Crypto, uh, Miguel, you know, um. You know, Psych Hacks came as well. So just hop into to Patreon, man. There's a lot of information there um, you guys can see. And uh, one sec. Uh, there we go. Let me share that screen. I'm sharing something else. As you, can see, as you can see here, guys, a lot of content here, back and forth. Um, so we bring in a guest every single week as well, um, just to break it down for more details in um, you know, the network. And um, you never know who's going to be in there, guys. So that'll be networking. All right. Guys, we're out of here, man. This was a great call. Shout out to Steve for adding value as, as usual. Um, I think, dude, guys, to pay to pay Steve for his time and how much RC puts in the FNF would be so much money, man. And he does it for free, uh, kind of uh, out, of, out of kindness. And to me, it's more yeah. like he looks as good as his family. That's important, man. Because to be honest with you, if I was a CPA, I want less work. I don't want more work because I'm like books for the whole year, you know? So this is important work. I believe yeah. in it. And there's a special reason why we talked about it. I'm not going to get into it at this moment. Yeah. But there's there's a purpose behind this. That's the driving force. Very honorable, you know. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys. We're out of here, man. This is a great call. I love you guys. And we're out. Peace. Thank you. And blessings.